Hi there, welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a target range practice box or a BB trap or however you want to call it. It's going to be a little wooden box which I could shoot my airsoft guns to inside the house without actually breaking something inside the house and that is actually going to catch the BBs and avoid having a mess all over the house as well. I have looked for some information online on how people do this to figure out how I'm going to do my own and one of the most things that is shown online is actually using some shag pile carpet to which I have an old shag pile carpet here that I was going to discard. It's already all yellowy and broken underneath so I'm going to use the good parts of this to actually build the box and everything else is going to the trash. And as I said, the box is gonna go indoor, so it's gonna be small. It's gonna be approximately two feet by two feet. And I'm gonna add some paper targets to that so that I can actually print whatever type of uh, targets I want and make this a little bit more fun. Like if I wanna go and kill some zombies, for example, or kill a squirrel without actually hurting a squirrel. Or if I want, I can print out Bambi and piss off a lot of people. Hopefully they understand it's just a piece of paper. So what I'm gonna do in this video is actually show you a little bit of what I'm going to do. I'm not gonna go step by step. I just wanna give you an idea of how I'm gonna build it and if you're interested in doing something like this or if you like it and want to do something like this and you have a better idea of how you can do it. So let's go ahead and show you what we're gonna work with. As I said, I have the Shag Pile carpet. That's a bathroom carpet that I was gonna throw away but I'm gonna recycle that. I also have a little few pieces of plywood. Some of this actually was left over from my bicycle build from the e-bike of a battery box that I did. And uh, some of this I just purchased, these two parts over here. I just got today and that is all half inch plywood I got from my local hardware store. I also have a 2x4 because I wanted to actually add the carpet to that and make it removable in case I want to replace it. If it breaks down the road I don't have to take the whole box apart. I can just take that part off, replace the carpet with whatever other a towel or whatever I can use and put that back in. Let me just go into the process a little bit and I'm not going to go step by step as I said, I'm just going to show you overall um, how I'm working with it and what I do. So let's get into that. Okay, and this is basically how this is going to go. The box is going to be two feet by two feet. This is just one piece that I already bought that's cut to that size. And what we're going to do is add some sides to this that are going to be slanted. There's going to be a top cover here on the back that is also, well, of course, slanted. And on the top, we're going to add those two little pieces of plywood over there. That's going to be something like this. On the top of the box here, this is going to hold the carpet. This is going to just be a piece that's going to be solid there. This is going to be removable. And uh, in the back here, it's going to go down slanted right there. So, I even think I can cut off a little bit off the back of this and use it on this side here. I think I'll try that out as well, just to make the box a little bit smaller and make it a little bit more portable.
Okay, so my jigsaw died on me and I came out to buy another one. I have been looking at the Ryobi jigsaw, so I am thinking about getting that one, which is, uh, I believe this one right here, yeah. Yeah, $39.97, plus tax and whatnot. There's another one that's Black & Decker here, $33.90. Uh, I'll give it a look around and see what I can get and then get back to the project. Okay, there seems to be a small little problem here and this is the only Ryobi that they have available for that price. It's all mangled up. But the good thing is that they have this Black & Decker one and this one is actually cheaper. It has a nice box and it has the same features that the Ryobi one has so I think I'm gonna go with this one for now it seems to be the better deal for what they have available okay back to the box One of the things I did with the e-bike project when I did the battery box is actually use hot glue to hold things in place while I figured out if things were going correctly or not. And it's a kind of removable or non-permanent way to try things out. So I think I have the basic parts I need to get the basic structure up. So I'm gonna try this out with hot glue first. And if it works out, I could just screw it right there and continue with the rest of the box. So let's do that.
Okay, so now we just hold it in place for a little bit while that hot glue dries out. It really shouldn't take that long, so. Once it dries out, at least it should hold a little bit in place so that, as I said, I could figure out the structure and what I need to actually make it work. I'm pretty sure I'm almost done with the parts, little puzzle parts that I did back there. That should be enough to put this together. As I said, you put this up with hot glue and if you don't like it, you take it apart, try again, do a different configuration or whatever. So, that is almost set. I should be able to take it off the side here. There we go, that's in place. It could still break off if you manage it incorrectly, but if you kind of hold it in place and don't jiggle it around too much, it should be fairly stiff. And once I put the top bar here, that should be enough to hold it even without the screws. Then I can just go ahead and take my time screwing it up together. So let's put the other side over here and see what happens. Stay in place, stay in place, come on, stay in place. Ah. You can stay in place. Come on, you can do it. Let's try to hold it together. That other side is not falling off, so that's a plus. For me, hot glue is one of those things like zip ties and duct tape. I always have to have some of that around. That should be about enough. Eh, kind of. Add a little bit more glue here, just for reinforcement. Okay, and there we go. It's basic structure holding up with hot glue. And uh, what I want to do is put the top part in, but I want to wait a little bit for the glue to dry completely, or as best possible before I try to wiggle this around a bit. Yeah, that's kind of it. It's holding up. It'll break down in a second or two, but yeah, as I said, you gotta wait for the hot glue to say dry out. Okay, so I'll keep gluing this thing up, putting things together, and I'll be back once it's time to put the screws in and show you guys and girls out there how I finish this up.
Okay, and there we have it. It's completed. What I did is I actually added this part here. I made it removable, but you don't have to make it removable. You could just leave it fixed in there. In case you need to change the carpet out in the future, I just left it like this. The weight keeps it down, and you can just take this out and remove the carpet and put another one, and that's it. Or a towel or whatever you're gonna put in there. So what I did on the inside is, I used the same shag pile carpet back here. Just as a backing here, and I used the other leftover piece down here. So when the BB comes in, it should hit here. It's at an angle, it should shoot down. Hopefully be catched here. And if it comes forward or something, it should not come at full force or anything. It should just drop off maybe the box or something. That's not gonna be a problem for me. So when you actually add this to it, set it up like so the BB will actually hit this and it has movement so it should allow the BB to waste its force and then drop off and that's it I should not have BBs bouncing all around my house they should be here in the box or if they do drop off here because I didn't put anything up front here they should just drop close by it should be easy to pick them up if it's a problem later on and I need to add something here it's a block the BBs from coming back out, I'll do that. But for now, I just wanna try it out as it is right now. And I think it's pretty much done. I added these paper clips or alligator clips that I used in my previous DIY. And I actually just bent them a little bit here and screwed them to the back. And I can put my piece of paper here and I can use two pieces of paper. I'll show you that. So this is what I have. I'm gonna use the whole envelope because I don't wanna actually open this up but yeah basically you just open it up here so basically I'll just open it up here put the paper in and that's it that'll sit right there the other one will sit on this one and I have two targets that are all the way back in there I could start shooting that with the BBs as I said, the good thing about this is that I can print my own designs. I can use zombies or little animals or whatever I want to use as targets. So we'll just have to wait and see. So I'll just check out online and see what I can get as target practice. But for now, I think it's pretty much done. As I said, I did the backside slanted. You can decide to make it a box as well if you want. I just wanted to make sure that if the BB bounced to the wall, it went down. And if you make it straight, well, it'll bounce back. And if you use two carpets like I did, you won't have that problem. I'm just doing like the worst case scenario deal here. So the only thing I have left for this right now is actually try it out. But I will have to make another video for that. So the follow up video will actually be testing this thing with my two BB guns and see how well it works. But for the moment, the box is done. The video is done. Thank you for watching until the next video.